I like snakes. I had a snake when I was a kid. You know that python eggs stick together? They come out wet. <laughs> and before they dry, the mama python kind of, uh, in what's called egg brooding, kind of coils them all together in one big glob, like you can see right here. And the eggs stick together so they don't roll away, and it's for safety, and you know, they keep each other warm. And so if you ever find a big pile of gooey paper-like eggs, you watch yourself. There's a mama python around. You know, my thigh thons hurt from this episode. Am I leaning over like Larry King? Tonight on CNN, I'm a corpse. Hello and welcome to another episode of Because Science Footnotes, the show where I take all your comments, questions, and corrections about all the nerdy stuff that we got up to on this channel in the last week or so, and then I tell you what comes next that we can nerd out about. And, you know, no spoilers, but it has something to do with this cartridge. Ooh, mysterious. So on the last episode of Because Science, I said that you should never attempt a superhero landing. The so-called three-point or superhero landing is super dangerous and it's designed almost, it seems, to break you. And that is because when you land with basically one knee first, maybe with a fist in the back of your foot, you are minimizing the amount of time your momentum has to come to a stop. During a normal landing, you bend your knees quite a bit and this extends the amount of time you have to come to a stop, which lowers the forces on your body due to smart boy Isaac Newton's second law. But when you land, like this, you come to a stop almost instantaneously, thus maximizing the forces on your body, and that's why you shouldn't try it, because it could break your legman. Legs. Legs. I mean, that's what I said, but what did you have to say, specifically? Our first comment comes from Red Boy Productions. Oh, sorry, Red Roy Productions. Gotta make sure your company gets its plug. Your femur could potentially survive a 4,000 Newton strike. I said it couldn't. But what about the rest of you? The bones in your feet would shatter and the muscles and tendons would tear and definitely would not walk away from that landing. Yes, Red Boy Productions, I was using the femur, the strongest bone in your body, right inside your thigh. I was using that as an example of the worst case scenario, the limiting case. So if it can break your femur, a superhero landing falling from you know a couple stories up, then it is definitely not something you're walking away from. But good point. It's even worse than I said. It's, it's not like you do the superhero landing and you're just like, oh, my femur. No, it'd also be your ankles and your back and your neck and... I've seen it happen. I mean, they didn't land like a superhero. And my climbing gym, which, which we'll get to. I saw a guy from, fall from 45 feet. In those kind of cases, you're not really walking away from those landings regardless, but if you land like a superhero, even less so. Our next comment comes from Michael Birthlisten. Birthlisten. Birth. Berthelsen. Your knee's impact surface is the same as your palm? How big is your body, Kyle? I don't know about you, but my, my knee surface area is no more than five or six square centimeters. How big is my body? <laughs> I don't know, man. What, what do you mean? <laughs> Look, so I'm assuming that your body is soft. It's made out of soft, smoogy things. And I assume that it wouldn't be just the surface of your knee impacting the ground. It would kind of smooge a little bit and be impacting most of the surface area of your knee. And then if you measure that out, in terms of centimeters, then you have somewhere around, you know, six by six centimeters, which is 36 square centimeters. I think I said 32, so maybe, maybe I did like five by six. Anyway, my body is huge, and your body is a wonderland. What were you talking about? Oh yeah, your body is soft, and so I assumed now, uh, I assume that you'd be hitting the entire surface area of your knee and not just the patella, or patella, if you want to sound like you're smart. Our next comment comes from Aaron Bagel. I prefer everything bagels. Who says, can't argue with anything here. Yes. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Having practiced parkour for a good while now, we've basically tested various landing techniques to find out which is the most useful if you don't want to destroy your knees. Essentially a break 
fall rule becomes useful anywhere from above one meter, or about three feet. However, I'd like to point out now, when you mention normal landings, you're actually doing two different techniques in the videos that you show. Uh, Aaron Bagel points out that in one of the fall videos, I, when I'm falling from around 15 to 20 feet, I come down and I bend my knees and then I do a little, what Aaron calls a safety tap on the ground. And Aaron's right. What you're doing there, if you're also putting, if you're, if you're bending your legs all the way down and then putting your arms on the ground and then bending your arms, you are in effect extending the amount of time you are coming to a stop even further because you are resisting uh, the motion with your leg muscles and then resisting the motion with your arm muscles, even though the leg muscles are a lot stronger. So that's why parkour dudes and dudettes do that. When they roll forward, is it is maximum the amount of time it takes for their momentum to come to a stop. That's why they do that. I don't know why they wear such baggy pants though. Explain that to me, Aaron. Our next comment comes from Adam McDDCM. It's not how you spell McDonald's. Who says, Kyle, those are not appropriate shoes for bouldering. The shoes that I'm doing superhero landings in are not appropriate shoes for bouldering. You are correct. You know what are? La Sportiva Solutions. When you got a hard problem that you need to solve, get the solution. La Sportiva Solutions. Sponsor me. It's the only shoe that I wear for hard stuff. If you want to climb something hard, you got to wear an aggressive bouldering shoe. I've, so I've been climbing for like a decade, uh, twice a week for the last 10 years of my life, and I swear by these shoes. Look how aggressive they are. So you're, you're focusing all of the force you can focus it down all just on the tip of the toe because the material here is so hard and you can, you can really... Yeah. La Sportiva Solutions. Tell them Kyle Hill sent you. Send me free stuff. Sending me free stuff. Wait. Sending out me free stuff now. It's the police. Our next comment comes from James Quest, ooh, who says, uh, a lot of stuff, but what I want to focus on is the reverse of the superhero landing, the superhero takeoff. Iron Man seems to not damage the ground re regardless of how quickly he lifts off, but in a movie like Hancock, Hancock wrecks the ground just as badly when he takes off. How can you leave the ground at speed without damaging the ground? So I think there's a misconception here. Iron Man is using rocket thrust to leave the ground, and how rockets take off isn't pushing off against the ground. That's not what a rocket does. When the jets of hot gas come out, they're not pushing against the ground and forcing the rocket up in the air. The rocket is forcing itself up in the air by ejecting mass at high velocity. That creates a reactionary force that forces the rocket upwards. It's not pushing off against the ground at all, but for something like uh, Hancock or for the Incredible Hulk, the feet actually have to generate the force at the ground and then the ground will push back up on the Hulk and that's how the Hulk can jump so high and so far. The ground is pushing on them in that case, which could overcome the uh, material strength of the ground and destroy it, but for something like Iron Man, that thrust is coming from the repulsors and not the ground itself. So that's how Iron Man can lift off without any damage. Our next comment comes from Thomas Jackson, who's referring to my Batman and his knee smashing example. And he says, well, that explains why the doc says Bruce's knees are that bad in the Dark Knight Rises then. Yes, yes it does. I mean, it wouldn't affect your cartilage, so to speak, but if you spent an entire lifetime while doing superhero landings on your knees, it might be pretty messed up. And then the doctor might say that. So yes, you are correct. No one, no one started caring about me but before I talked about the science. Only after. Only after. I have a Bane mask in my closet. Our next comment comes from Sean Allard, who says, as a filmmaker, I'd love to see how you film your episodes. Do you write everything backwards on glass? Is it done in post? Is the backdrop actually green or black? So many questions. So Lee's, so Lee's do a video on how you make these videos. No, I exist in a formless void once a week for your enjoyment. That's it. We have to go it's, it's like a portal to nowhere that we use. 
Yeah, the backdrop is actually uh, existential nothingness. And how I write um, on the screen, I, uh, it's, uh, it's a force projection from my mind. Kind of, like, uh, kind of like Kylo Ren, but thinner. As a filmmaker, you know what I'm talking about. But the best comment at the time of filming this episode comes from Sean Perry, who says, yeah, none of these forces on the legs matter if you pay close attention to how the superheroes are landing. You will notice that their heads are hanging forward almost parallel with the ground. This means that almost all of the force that their heads are experiencing from traveling towards the ground is gonna be put against their neck in a jerking motion towards the ground. Any kind of two-story fall, if you are talking the high end of a low-speed collision, that is more than enough force to cause you severe hyperflexion and potentially even be fatal. So what Sean here is saying is that if you look closely at many superhero landings, they're not just landing straight up like this. They actually land with their heads parallel to the ground like this. And I, maybe I can even demonstrate it like this. If I came falling down and I, st let's imagine that this is the neck and this is the head of the superhero. Let's watch what happens to the head as this comes to a stop. See what happens when I stop? This part of the body stops but this part of the body keeps going because it has its own inertia here. So if I do that, this is what Sean is talking about. And if the forces involved in something like this are hundreds of thousands of Newtons, some of that is gonna go into your neck, which is not nearly as, uh, as robust as your femur, and that could just straight up kill you instantly. Not only that, but your neck, it probably isn't strong enough to stop your head from just continuing on and smashing into the ground. So if you land like a superhero, like a lot of superheroes, with your head parallel to the ground, like Sean Perry says, shattering your knee or your leg is the least of your worries. Congratulations, Sean, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> It's better every week. But of course, I'm not always correct. What did, I, what did I get wrong this week? It's a lot. Our first correction comes from a number of people, but they all say, in your Batman smashing onto the roof of the van in the Dark Knight scene, that example that I used, the top of the van is actually crumpling under the force of the superhero landing that Batman is using, and so, isn't that crumpling reducing some of the force on Batman's knee? No. So I actually took this into account. There are two ways to go about determining impact force when you're doing a superhero landing. You can either use how long it takes for you to come to a stop and in your inertia and in your momentum, or you can uh, look at how far it takes you to come to a stop. Now, if you wanna talk about stuff crumpling, this is like a car's crumple zone. The front and back of your car, if you've ever been in a car, is designed, now modern cars are designed to crumple. And what that does is extend the amount of time the car's momentum has to come to a stop. And if you wanna use work and energy, it is distributing the difference in kinetic energy over a larger distance, which decreases the force. And the difference can be literally life and death. That's why cars have crumple zones. So I factored all this in. I looked at the time it takes Batman to come to a complete stop, top of the van crushing and all, from when his knee impacts the top of the van to when his body's center of gravity stops moving. And if you do that, you still get the average force on Batman's leg, and that's what I calculated. It would be different if the van didn't crumple and Batman just stopped, then that would be a different time, closer to Iron Man's time in Iron Man 2. But don't worry, I factored that in. It's still a bone crushing amount of force. I would have been wrong if I used the time to stop for Batman in this example as when his knee impacts the van and then immediately thereafter and didn't account for the crumpling. Then I would have been wrong, but I did. Our next correction comes from Justin Will, an iconic Dutch moonshade, sounds like a cool beer, who say, wouldn't the force that I was calculating for all the superhero landings be divided among the limbs that are touching the ground? And in my Batman example, then Batman's leg wouldn't break. You are absolutely right in your correction. I was only assuming a single impact point, taking all of the force of impact. But if you are landing 
exactly simultaneously in a three point landing, then that force is going to be distributed ab across those three different points. It's kind of like if you were standing on two different scales, one with each leg, your total weight would be the total weight if you added up the readings on both scales. That means even, even though you have a force pulling you down because of gravity, it's divided by the number of points you are pressing on the Earth with because that's a no total normal force divided by two legs. So you are correct if superheroes are landing perfectly simultaneously on all limbs. But from my example, from my experience in trying the superhero landing, you are landing with one first or the other first. It's not perfectly simultaneous, but you're right in your case, in some case in a case. Our next correction comes from Sam H and Glenn Bracey who say something very similar. Uh, isn't the point of the three point landing that you are increasing your surface area? You only measure the surface area of one knee. Yes, if you are landing perfectly simultaneously and distributing the force among three landing points, then the force is going to necessarily go down from the force that I used and across the surface area of each landing point, then the pressure on each uh, landing point would be smaller. But again, I assumed a single contact point from my experience, my knee or my foot hit first or my foot and then right into my knee. So I just use one point of contact. But yes, you are right in a perfect three point landing. How? Perfectly simultaneously, the pressures would go down. Still a lot. It's still enough to mess you up, but you're right. I guess my point was that if you wanted to land like a superhero and crack concrete, you probably could if you led with one knee like Morpheus does. I don't know, the, the way they edit these movies is that they only include like, they only do like a single frame of the landing to make it look more impactful, so you can't really tell what impacts first. I, I think we're all correct. <laughs> But the best correction at the time of this filming, I gotta give it back to Matterbeam, frequent viewer and commenter and super nerd, who says, I looked up the gold titanium alloys and they're a real thing. So uh, Iron Man, in the first Iron Man movie, he says the suit is made out of a gold titanium alloy. And I said, if you had something that's very, very dense that your suit was made out of, like gold, then it would give you a better chance of impacting surfaces in a superhero landing and not smooching your fleshy body, but instead it would go into and penetrate stuff like concrete. But Matterbeam looked up all the properties of a gold titanium alloy and found that if you want to resist the impact uh, pressures that we're talking about here, then Iron Man would need to have a suit that was like 0.27 meters wide on the thighs. Thickness. So we're talking about, yeah, the thickness of metal around Iron Man's thigh is going to be like this much. So Iron Man suit, thigh stops here, which is kind of like the Hulkbuster armor, I guess, but a regular suit, uh, as uh, Matterbeam points out, that is one thick boy. <laughs> thick with two C's because it is cubic centimeters. Congratulations, Matterbeam. You are once again a super nerd. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, my boy. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you have already seen it. Ooh. But if you haven't yet subscribed for premium content from me two days earlier than everyone else, the next episode of Because Science is going to be about this cartridge. Yeah, original, baby. 18 years old. It's Majora's Mask. That's right, this week's episode is all about this almost 20 year old game. Specifically, I wanna know if it's astrophysically correct. If you were to stop the moon in its orbit, how long would it take the moon to fall to a planet's surface? How long would it take our moon to fall to our planet's surface? Did Link really have 72 hours to live in Termina? Is it too long, too short, just right? The answer might surprise you. Clickbait. 
So go watch the latest episode of Because Science. If you haven't yet, it's all about whatever I was talking about. And go leave your comments and questions and corrections at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. That's where I pull all the stuff for all of this. Also, my colleague Daniel Casey and I are bringing back a limited run series of our old show, Natural Selection, where we argue science versus science fiction. And it's a lot of fun. It will be streaming on the YouTube channel for Because because Science on Thursday evenings for a limited amount of time. So if you want to check that out, you can you can watch it streaming on YouTube, but then you can also go to Project Alpha to see all of the episodes, because you'll get more if you subscribe. That's how we do it. And remember, hey, okay, <laughs> that's right. Keep it going. How? Good night.